What's up guys? So as you know, my truck has been in the shop now for about two months. And so during that time we have had a rental car. And now I'm not a professional, I don't know all the specs. Um, and I'm a truck owner, I'm not used to driving cars. But I feel like two months is long enough to form some type of opinion on this vehicle. So this is my 2016 Ford Fusion SE review. the 2016 Ford Fusion SE 2.5 liter engine four-door sedan this is a metallic silvery gray color I guess show you what it looks like half of this stuff doesn't mean anything to me but I feel like if you're watching this video it might mean something to you so there you have it so this is the key that came with the car. There are usually two, but since this is a rental car, the dealer only gave us one. Um, it is a manual switchblade key. It has electronic locks and unlocks. Um, this opens the trunk. See? And then this is for the alarm. This car does also have the electronic keypad in the door, but since we didn't buy the car, we don't know the code. You only know it when you buy it. So if you did know it, you would be able to unlock the doors, um, pop the trunk, and then also just lock it like that as well. For the key code, we don't know it because we didn't buy the car, but say you forgot your, your pass key, um, all you would do is you would take, if you had like the regular key, you would put one in the ignition, turn it on, shut it off, then turn the other key, put it on, turn it off, and then the code would pop up there. Same if, if you have the manual one, but we only have one key, so I can't show you that, but if I had both keys, I could show you, and it would tell you your code for the key for the door up there, if you ever forget it. For the door locks, if this doesn't work, say your battery died, and say if you had the regular key, say that it wouldn't, the battery in this died, how would you get in? Well, if you look right here on this doorknob, you see a little lock symbol. So what you would do is you would take your switchblade key if you have it, and there's a little slot underneath there. And all you do is you put it in, and you slide it to the right, and then this little cap pops off. And now you have a manual key lock to use. So if your battery dies, you can still get in your car. Now if you don't have the switchblade key, if you just have the regular one, on the back side of it, this little piece here slides off and inside is a switchblade key, which you can pull out to use for that. So either way, you can get into it. One cool thing about having the electronic key is that you can press it once to unlock it. See the lights go? And then you can press it again and hold it. And the windows roll down. How cool is that? And you can be pretty far away when you do this too. So like if you're in your house or you're walking to your car in the parking lot on the way home from work and you need to let some of the heat out, that's a pretty cool feature. And then all you do, you can hold the lock down again and it rolls them back up. And one feature is that if something is in the way, it'll automatically stop and roll back down. So you won't get your head caught in there or anything stuck in the window when it's rolling up. The gas cap pops open like that, and it is capless, so you just go in there. To open the trunk, you can either use the button on the key, or if you reach underneath here, there's a little button, and it will pop it open for you like that. So this has got a pretty good amount of space inside. Um, one thing I do like is that how these bars are behind this thing so when you have your trunk full of stuff and you close it it's not going to be hitting it and it's not going to be getting in the way so that's pretty good these seats do push down so you could go into the back if you were trapped in the trunk underneath here that's where the tire is and up here it's got this handle here so you can pull down to close it on that you don't have to get your fingerprints all over your car and this, I don't know what it does, probably something for safety. This trunk has got a lot of space in it. You could easily fit like three, four bodies in there. So this is what the inside looks like. Nice cloth seats, black, it's pretty durable, a nice pattern. 
Um, down here on the seat, it has adjustments for here. It goes front, moves it back. Um, it tilts it front and back. And then also this is a lumbar support. So this is pretty nice electronic seats. Down here, we'll pop the hood. This is the insides of the door. This up here is like a really soft plastic, kind of foamy. This is painted plastic, silver painted plastic. Um, and this actual here is a nice sewn leather armrest. So this is real leather here, which is very comfortable when you're leaning on it. It has electric mirror adjustments, and this is to lock the windows and then electric windows. Also electronic door locks. Over here is for the lights. It usually is set on automatic lights, but you can manually change it if you want to. This is for the trunk light. So this is what the center console looks like. It's got the shifter here. If you wanted to be a race car driver, you would just put it um, into like a low gear, and then you would use these buttons on the side here to shift through, and it has an automatic clutch. You have electric parking brake. All you do is pop it up like that to set it, and then in order to shut it off, you just step on the brake and push it back down. Um, two cup holders. You got storage in here in the center. Um, it's got a little tray here, and then a little spot for some coins. This whole thing comes out. Um, under and in here you have a spot for a USB charger and also a cigarette lighter um, a little pencil holder And a little, little tray for something. This is a pretty deep compartment space And then down under here you have more here's another lighter AC adapter and some more storage here And this does also come out in case it's dirty one thing I don't like about this center console is that the cup holds are right here. So when you have a cup here, especially with the straw, you can't rest your arm because your cup would be going right through your arm. So you it would have to be like off to the side or up and over it. And so that's kind of annoying having it right here. If it was a little bit more down or something, then it would feel more comfortable to me. But So again, this is the switchblade key for the ignition. So you can put that in. This is what the control panel looks like. It's pretty attractive looking, I think. It's a nice cool blue color. It's not hard on your eyes at nighttime. It's not too bright or anything like that. Um, it has different menus that shows you different miles per gallons. Um, this car has been averaging about 27.3 miles per gallon. That's pretty good. You can look at all the different trip settings. Distance to empty, 173. It shows you, it shows you the temperature, it shows you the direction, and it shows you how many miles are on the car. It's very good on gas mileage. It can stop on a dime, but it can also pick up and go on a dime. It's very easy to be going 80 miles an hour and not even realize it because it just goes so smoothly and so fast. These buttons here on the steering wheel are what controls this panel up here. So, you know, you can shuffle through things like that. Um, and then if it pops up with a message, you would hit the okay button for up there. These are the on off cruise control settings. This is for the headlights and high beams. This is for the wipers. You know, one click down would just be one quick wipe. And then I'll, if you clicked it up, it would be constant. And then you could control speed with that. Pulling it towards you does the wiper fluid. See that? These buttons on this side of the steering wheel control the radio. Um, this is for forward and back on the CD player. If you had your phone hooked up, you would answer a call or hang up. Um, voice control, muting the radio and the volume of the radio. I do like this steering wheel. However, one thing I don't like is this center piece here because I'm, I'm one of those people that just kind of sits with my hand low. And where this is, it's like right in the middle. And I can't squeeze all my fingers in there. That's not comfortable, you know. This is not comfortable. My wrist bent this way. So this one, if this was a little bit wider or, or something, then that would be more comfortable to me to just rest my hand here. But if you're one of the people that always has their hands up or whatever, then that don't really care about that, do you? <laughs> this is the radio. It is not touch screen. It is just a small screen. Um, shows the temperature, the time, and the date. Um, you can turn the volume on and that will turn everything on. It has CD, radio, media, which would be like an aux or an iPhone. Your phone, you can sync it up to Bluetooth, different menu options. 
that sets the time, Sirius radio, and then this also adjusts the sound and the volume and the bass and all those kinds of, of things. These buttons here are for the preset radio stations, or you could just use the tune dial to find something that you wanted, or you could also just type in what station you wanted it to go to. And there you go. So since this is not touch screen or anything, you have these four buttons here that correspond to what's up here. So for example, this says for the assistant, this one goes for direct, info, and mute. So that's what will control that. Again, if you synced up your phone to it, you answer and hanging up, forward and next for the CD player, shuffling, things like that. This is the control panel for the heating and the cooling. Power turns it on. Um, it's pretty direct to whatever specific area you want to cool, your feet, your head, defrost, rear defrost, keeping it in the car, AC. Um, this adjusts the levels. And then obviously, max AC and max heat. This car does heat up and cool down very quickly. So that's a very good heating and cooling system. This car also does have the backup camera. So when you put it in reverse, it shows you that. And you know, it shows you where your wheels would go if you're turning. That white line is the wheels. And then also this little magnifying glass here. If you press this button, it would show you it zooms in and so if you're pulling a trailer it would show you the ball of the trailer right there so as another very close-up camera on the back and then press it again and it goes back to that view so this is the uh, visor this one has a mirror and that one has a mirror these are the buttons for the dome lights this one here controls that light this one controls that one this one turns them all on, including the back. Press it again, it'll shut them off. Or you can press this one, it'll shut them off. And then this one for the windows will control it if you want the light to come on when you open the doors or not. This is inside the glove box. Um, it's pretty spacious in there. It's got a nice deep back row there and there. And then on here, it's got a little cargo net to kind of bungee in something you don't want flying around, whether it be your owner's manual or a gun or whatever. So these are the, what the side mirrors look like. It has a smaller one here for blind spots. So this car is acknowledging that it has bad blind spots, but that's how it's correcting it. I kind of find that annoying. And of course I learned in drivers that just always do head checks. So I don't rely on the mirrors, thankfully, because this annoys me. In the back seat now, it's very roomy back here. Uh, you can see lots of leg room. Um, two air vents down there, and then also another adapter down there for you. Pockets on the back seats, same type of plastic on the doors and the leather armrest, electric window, a little cubby down there. The center part here pulls down and you have two cup holders. And then also on each side of the seat are these buttons here, which you would pull and it will pull the seats down and it goes into the trunk little baby hooks for car seats. Another thing I don't like is these headrests. They're kind of terrible. Like they're kind of high up. So I'd have to like sit really high up or something, but like all I do is crank forward. Like who, who would have it like this? Like this is very uncomfortable. You know, it just doesn't make any sense. Why is it like that? This is if what I, if I want. I'm too short, it would be, be like hitting me in the head like I don't I don't get it it just doesn't make sense I'm not tall enough to like rest on it and it just cranks in like a weird position I don't know I think that is all I can think of for this car um, it's overall it's a pretty good car I didn't mind driving it like I said I'm used to driving trucks so you know my first time going over speed bump in this was uh, a little rough I may or may not have bottomed out, but again, I'm used to driving trucks and I'm sure all you normal car owners were probably would have known that and <laughs> I didn't. Overall, pretty good car. We're definitely getting our usage out of it from the dealer. He's not going to be happy when he gets this car rental bill, but maybe he should fix our truck a little bit faster, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> 
so that's it guys um, thanks for watching my review I hope you uh, learned some interesting things about this car and uh, if you were thinking about buying one yourself I hope this helped you get a little bit better insight to it I overall I do like this car but I can't wait to get my truck back <laughs> hopefully sometime this week thanks for watching guys I love you and I will catch you in the next vlog <laughs>